to that degree. And so let's get ready to go into the word of God as he has spoke into my spirit for myself and for the congregation. Uh, we were coming from Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I will begin my reading at verse 13, and it, re it reads, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of men, for God shall bring every work unto judgment, including every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. I would like to call your attention back to the first phrase of verse 13, for it is out of this particular verse uh, that I will be giving you this topical sermon that God has placed in my spirit. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Yes. I want to use, in a way of a subject today, that God has placed upon my spirit uh, a question. And the question that God has placed in my spirit is, what's the matter with Jesus? Will you do me a favor? Uh, turn to your neighbor. And the only way that you can really say this with conviction, you have had to have some type of experience with him. So if you have, I'd like for you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I know he's all right. I know he's all right. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. As I set the metaphor for this application of this sermon in your hearing, uh, uh, for us to fully understand the proposition of this topical sermon, it is imperative that I bring additional clarity to the often used word called matter. According to VOA, Voice of America, English News, the Learning English Program, Words and Their Stories. It says that the English language has a number of hard-working words. People use these words in many different ways and in many different expressions. In linguistics, linguistics, thank you, Lord. Uh, a homonym is one of the group of words that shares the same spelling and pronunciation, uh, but have different meanings. One such word is matter. Uh, as a matter of fact, matter can mean just about anything. Uh, when talking about science, matter is a matter, is the matter and substance of what things are made of. Uh, in the cluster of the great galaxy containing 1,000 galaxies and uh, trillions of stars, a person can look uh, in the NASA Hubble uh, Space Telescope and they can see the image of the descriptions, uh, distribution of what is called dark matter. A so. uh, uh, scientist says that dark matter makes up most of our, thank you Lord, universe. Uh, another scientific meaning for matter is when people are talking about gray matter, they are talking about the brain. Amen. For we learned that gray matter is our brain. Amen. In fact, matter could be one of the most useful words in the English English language. Uh, Y'all bear for a little while. Uh, but that is a matter of opinion. Uh, actually, I want you to understand that matter is more than that because matter is one of those words that matters a lot. Uh, especially uh, upon the content in which it is used. Uh, if I may give some examples, I'm going to try to get on that. Well, I don't come to worry on today. Uh, if I would say, let's take a minute to get to the heart of the matter. In other words, what I'm saying is, uh, let's go to the very important part. Or I could say, it could be said, or uh, a matter of principle. Uh, to give an example of this is that if someone claimed you owed them $50 and you didn't owe them $50, well, someone could say to you, well, just pay them the $50. It's not that much money. And then you don't have to hear them complain. Uh, but if you don't owe them the money, then they don't pay the money because it's a matter of principle. Uh, but they have a very important 
fact, thank, thank the Lord, in point, because it is not the amount of money, thank the Lord, it is the principle of whether you owe the money or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, y'all rest for a little while. I didn't come to where you. Truly, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Uh, another use of the word matter that we should be very careful of. Oh, uh, y'all bear us for a little while. Uh, how we ask a person, what's the matter with you? Oh, that's right. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all bear us for a little while. To the Lord is good. Uh, there is another way to use the word matter, but uh, we should be very careful in the choice of words that we use. Uh, thank you, Lord. So if you ask someone, what's the matter? Uh, it shows that we are concerned uh, about the other person. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, usually when we ask someone what's the matter, uh, it is because we notice that the countenance of the person looks angry or weary. Uh, but to say what's the matter with you uh, is a completely different meaning. Well, thank you, Lord. And it usually sounds rude and can be offensive. Yes. Well, y'all bear for a little while. Yes. Uh, in fact, I want you to understand when a person say, what's the matter with you? Uh, they are not really asking the person what's wrong in a genuine concern. What they are suggesting is that that individual has something wrong or done something stupid. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. They have a very unpleasant or, or attitude or report. Well, y'all rest for a little while. Uh, but wouldn't it church be so wonderful, especially with church folk? If they would obey God's word about, thank you, Lord, about the words that they speak. For the Bible tells us that we should avoid offensive words. Uh, that our words should be seasoned with salt. But I don't mean no harm. The sad reality with too many church folk is they're too salty when they're talking to others. Do me a favor and say name. I hope he's not talking about you. I don't mean no harm if you didn't get no response out of your neighbor. Nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, well, he's talking about you. <laughs> For James 3 and 2 says, thank you, Lord. For in many things we all offend. If any man offend not in words... The saying is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. Yes. Proverbs 16 and 24 begin to say, pleasant words are as honeycomb, yes. sweet to the soul and healthy to the bone. Yes. Yes. Colossians 4 and 6 says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And y'all bear us for a little while. Do me, uh, do me a favor, say neighbor. neighbor. It's going to get better it's after a while. I, I'm, I'm just trying to set the stage right now. Uh, thank you, Lord, because the question is, what's the matter with Jesus? Uh, but let's consider this word matter a little further. Uh, another expression, uh, thank you, Lord, that can sound rude or be offensive when we say it is when we say it doesn't matter. Oh, y'all are for a little while. But we also got to understand this depends on the context. Uh, thank you, Lord, on the situation of how we use it. Uh, can I give you a couple examples? And I'm going to try to get on out of the way. So let someone say that a certain person got a, a raise on at work uh, and they will be making more money. Yeah. When you tell the individual and they reply, uh, it doesn't matter to me. Oh, uh, y'all are for a little while. Means that the person is really saying, I don't care. Uh, it sounds rude. It, it sounds like the person is envious and jealous and resentful because of the blessing of somebody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't come to where you And then there's another example that my wife, Sister Jean, and I experience often. A uh, matter of fact, just on this past Friday. Uh, saying, oh, you picked the place where we want to eat. Because uh -huh. it don't matter. It don't matter. <laughs> there, there is nothing offensive at all about that. 
uh, in this content and tone of voice. Uh, it doesn't matter. It shows that you're easy going and willing to do what the other person wants to do. But well, y'all rest a little while. So the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. So considering the, the voice of America, thank you, Lord, English, thank you, Lord, uh, news, and learning English program words, and thank you, Lord, their story. Well, it comes and concludes this way. Uh, it, no matter how you slice it, no matter how you look at it, no matter how you see it, matter is a very hard working word. Amen. Will y'all bear for a little while? Amen. Well now church, would you allow me to get really get to the heart of the matter? Yes, well, if you're going to do that, then I invite you to briefly travel with me on this journey. Back in time to a place when the earth was without form and it was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. Oh, thank you, Lord. And God divided the light from the darkness and God called the, the, thank you, Lord, the light day and he called the darkness, thank you, Lord, night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God made the firmaments, and God called the firmaments heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters of the heaven be divided together, be gathered together into one place. And let dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together, he called sea. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding seeds and fruit trees yielding fruit and thank you Lord seeds after its kind and it was so. And the evening and the morning thank you Lord were the third day. And God said thank you Lord let there be light thank you Lord in the firmaments of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs for season days years and thank you Lord and the light of the firmament to give light upon the earth and it was so. And God made a greater light, the sun, uh, thank you, Lord, the greater light to rule by day, and the moon, the lesser light to move, rule by night. And he made the stars also, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Oh, uh, thank you, Lord. Give me a favor, say neighbor. Pastor's going somewhere. He's going somewhere. Uh, thank you, Lord. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly of creatures that has life. The birds that fly in the air above the earth. And thank you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. And God created great whales and every living creature that was in the water. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Oh, thank you, Lord. And the evening and the morning was the fifth day. And God said, thank you, Lord, let the, thank you, Lord, the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts. And it was so. And God said, let us make men in our own image. Uh, let, uh, thank you, Lord, and let them have dominion over the fish and of the sea and over the birds of the earth and over the cattle and over the creeping things upon the earth. And so God created man in his image. Male and female created he them. Oh, God bless them. And God blessed them and said, thank you, Lord, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. And heaven and the earth were finished and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all the work in which he had created and made. Yes. I need to bring you to this attention. Yeah. Well, I want you to understand something happened before God created woman. Yeah. Well, prior 
started to creating woman, perhaps one day Adam sadly was moving around in the garden. Oh, y'all yeah, rest for a little while. He was listening to the birds. And the young male robins were singing to the female robins. God notices and say, what's the matter with Adam? Oh, Adam's lonely. So God put Adam to sleep and performed the first surgery on him, taking one of his ribs and made him a woman, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, and Adam named her Eve. So God placed Adam and Eve in the garden of, of Eden and to dress and to keep it. And, and God they gave them a command that they could partake of every tree of the garden that was good for food except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, thank you, Lord. But it lets us know that but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thy shall in the day that thou eat thereof, thy shall surely die. Yeah. Well, Bible readers, you know as the story goes that Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit. Yes. And I want you to understand that the matter of mankind changed. Yes. The sin of disobedience and death entered the, thank the Lord, the life of man. Truly the God is good. And with time and every since the fall of man, the matter of the abundance of man's sinful nature, uh, his quest, thank Lord, to fulfill and to gratify the lust of the flesh, the question still remains, what's the matter with mankind? Uh, yeah, y'all gonna be a little strange. I, I don't care where you betray. God is good, but thanks be to God because of God's love, mercy, and faithfulness. God implemented a plan of salvation through the atonement to reconcile man back to good standards with Him. I don't mean no harm, but many uh, believe or think that thank the Lord atonement, thank the Lord only came through the Mosaic law. But I want to understand long before Moses came in existence. Mankind realized the need for atonement long before that time. Oh, yeah. uh, you gotta understand when Adam and Eve committed the first sin of disobedience. Uh, they thank the Lord, they hid themselves from God uh, because they were ashamed. Oh, but rather, thank you, Lord, that giving them up to hopelessness. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, he initiated a plan of atonement. Oh, thank you, Lord, whereby that, that thank you, Lord, relationship which was severed. Oh, thank you, Lord, which was interrupted. Oh, could, it could be brought back together again. Oh, thank you, Lord, between God and humanity could be restored. Well, y'all rest for a little while. The, our English word atonement could be, thank you, Lord, translated as at one moment. Oh, y'all rest for a little while. Uh, it explains the theological behind the restoration of mankind because it suggests that, thank you, Lord, the relationship between God and humanity can at one, thank you, Lord, again. Be at one again. Y'all rest for a little while. Now, I don't mean no harm the question asked of how does, thank you, Lord, atonement work? Well, the first we got to understand indirectly in the Old Testament it refers to atonement occurred that when God provided an animal skin to cover Adam and Eve in the garden because they were naked. The Lord is good. You got to under. Oh, thank you, Lord. You got to understand the act. Thank you, Lord, uh, of necessitating. Uh, thank you, Lord, death of a sinless animal. Uh, hence, thank you, Lord, the shedding of blood on Adam and Eve's behalf. Therefore, this introduced the theme that runs throughout the Bible. Atonement involves an innocent person or party giving up and taking the punishment of a guilty party. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the animals hadn't did anything. They were just doing what they were made to do. Yeah. Uh, but because of the sins of Adam and Eve, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the sinless animals had to give up his life. Yeah. He 
had to shed his blood so they could have some clothes. Oh, y'all got to ask for a little while. Good the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Well, somebody might be asking the question, what, thank you, Lord, has this have to do with Jesus? Well, I want you to understand, while the animals served as a provisional sacrifice for mankind, uh, thank you, Lord, doing the Old Testament, they could not ultimately, thank you, Lord, atone for the sins of men. Oh, y'all rest for a little while. Right. Humanity needs, thank you, Lord, at one, they need one of their own. Jesus. Oh, y'all rest for a little while. Thank you, Lord. Uh, one that had no sin right. to stand and take the punishment that was due to all sinners. Yeah. Oh, y'all rest for a little while. And church, I don't mean no harm, but oftentimes we read in Genesis, uh, thank you, Lord, chapter 3 and Verse 15, for it gives us a prophetic glimpse of God's final solution and gives us the role that Jesus played uh, in that solution. Can I share it with you? I'm going to try to learn it. What it tells us, it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head and thy shall bruise his heel. I want you to understand the role that Jesus played played in atonement uh -huh. is, thank the Lord, that the seed of the woman would be crushed. Uh -huh. uh, thank the Lord. But in return, he will crush the head of the serpent. Yeah. In other words, I will crush the head of Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, achieving victory over sin and death. Oh, y'all oh, ask for a little while. Uh, you got to understand that the crushing, thank the Lord, mentioning here is reminiscent of the crushing and bruising experience of the suffering servant recorded in, thank the Lord, in Isaiah 53, beginning at verse 1. See, you got to understand this gives us the story of atonement. Uh, in other words, a person can say that this is the gospel in the Old Testament. So you got to understand because as Isaiah begin to prophesy, he begin to say it this way, who has believed our report, and uh, thank the Lord, and to whom is the arms of the Lord revealed, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, uh, and as a root out of dry ground, uh, he has no form or no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. Uh, he was, thank the Lord, he is uh, de despised and rejected of men, oh, yeah. a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. Oh, yeah. He hid, thank the Lord, we hid as it were our faces from him. He was, thank the Lord, uh, despised uh, and esteemed, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and of Afflicted. Oh, thank you, Lord. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his, our peace was upon him, and by with his stripes we are healed. We are all as sheep gone astray. We have everyone turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Oh, thank you, Lord. He, thank you, Lord, was oppressed. He was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Oh, oh that sounds like a, thank you, Lord, a replay. Oh, oh, thank you, Lord. And he opened not his mouth. And he, thank you, Lord, he is brought as a sheep, thank you, to the slaughter. And thank you, Lord, as a lamb to the slaughter. And a sheep before, thank you, Lord, the, the glory, hallelujah. And as sure as is done. So he opened not his mouth. He, thank you, Lord, was taken from prison out, thank you, Lord, and from judgment. And thank you, oh, y'all, rest for a little while. You shall, thank you, Lord, declare his generation. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made him grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither were there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to prove him. Glory, hallelujah. Well, I'm beginning to feel better. Shall make his soul uh, an offering for sin.
sin. He shall see. Thank the Lord his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see, thank the Lord, the travail of his soul. And oh, glory, hallelujah. And shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will, thank the Lord, divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has poured out his soul unto death. And thank the Lord. And was numbered with the transgressions. And he bore the sins of many. And my verse for a little while. For the transgressor, for a feeling better now. I want you to understand that Jesus is both the subject and the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy in the events that unfolded in the trial. Thank you, Lord, and in the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He was the divine. Suffering servant on our behalf. Thank the Lord. And though innocent of all sin, lovingly, Jesus stood in our place and took our punishment, shedding his own blood to atone us. Glory, hallelujah. Church, I need to move, but I'm feeling better now. For the God I serve is a good God as he is. Come on, Hebrew, and help me confirm that in 912, neither by the blood of goats or cat cattle, but by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now, perhaps for a little while, down in verse 22, and it says, and by the law, thank you also all things that are purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Now, perhaps for a little while, you thank you, Lord, was therefore necessary for a copy of the things in heaven should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. What you're trying to say, brother preacher, I want you to understand by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Glory, hallelujah. He satisfied God's wrath against sin. Glory, hallelujah. I'm feeling all right. I want you to understand. So when it comes to the atonement of mankind, it was once said there was a search that went out to find somebody that could go down and redeem man and be an atonement. Now bear for a little while. Who could properly atone for the sins of man? We need a perfect, a sinless sacrifice. And the question was asked, what's the matter with the archangel Raphael? He declares he has healing power. What's the matter with the archangel Gabriel? For throughout the age of time, he has been sent as a messenger of God. What's the matter with the archangel Michael? His name means who is like God. Michael had already defeated Satan in his empire. His angels join them out of heaven. But I want you to know the Raphael. Thank you, Lord. I want you to understand that Gabriel and Michael came to Oh, the Lord, hallelujah. I'm feeling better now. Well, what's the matter with Abraham? Abraham believed the Lord, and God accredited to him for 
righteousness. Abraham mean the father of many nations, a man of faith. But Abraham can't do it. Y'all pray for a little while. Well, what's the matter with Isaac? Y'all pray the Lord. Isaac is a son of Christ, a type of Christ. When he willingly stepped for Abraham, was willing to sacrifice himself upon one of the mountains of Mount Moriah. He even blessed his son Esau and Jacob. But Isaac can't do it. Y'all better pull it around. Well, what's the matter with Jacob? I know Jacob had some problems in his life, but he wrestled with the angel. And I, I, I won't let you go to your blessed name. He is the father of the son of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. But Jacob can't do it. Y'all bear for a little while. Well, wait a minute. Is there somebody else? Well, wait a minute. What's the matter? Thank you, Lord. He walked with God and he was translated that he should not see death because he had this testimony that he pleased God. But Enoch can't do it because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. was fulfilled ha, down to 42 ha, generations. Ha. Thank you, Lord. Ha. The perfect sacrifice came ha, born of the Virgin Mary. Ha. And Matthew confirmed it ha, when he said, and she ha, shall bring forth a son ha, and they shall call ha, his name Jesus. Ha, for he shall save ha, his people from their sins. Ha. Want you to know when John the Baptist saw him coming, he cried out, Behold, the Lamb of God, in whom take away the sins of the world. I come to ask the question, What's the matter with Jesus? Well, I want you to know the crowd, they turn around him. For his teaching, ha, for his healing, ha, and his miracles. I've been for a little while, ha, and I don't mean no harm. Ha. I don't think of any of those people ha, was here today. Ha. If you would say, give me ha, your testimony, ha, they will tell you, ha, I know ha, he's all right. Ha. Glory, hallelujah. Ha. I know he's all right. Ha. What's the matter with Jesus? Well, the chief priests ha, and religious leaders, ha, they scorned him, ha, made false accusations ha, about him. Ha. What's the matter with Jesus? Ha? Well, thank you, Lord. Ha. Amazingly, ha, a disgruntled mob ha, of his own people ha, cried out, ha, crucify him, ha, crucify him. 
crucify him. What's the matter with Jesus? Well, sadly, the soldiers, they beat him. They whipped him. They put a scarlet robe on him and a crown of thorns on his head. They nailed him. They nailed him to an old rugged cross. And then they stood back to watch him die. Glory, hallelujah. What's the matter with Jesus? Well, he was crucified between two thieves. Glory, hallelujah. Like a criminal. Got a little while. And thank you, Lord. And he gave up the gold. And they placed him in a rich man's tomb. What's the matter with Jesus? Well, Jesus bled, suffered, and died. But I heard, but I heard, after three days and three nights, Jesus, the lily of the past, Jesus, the brightest morning star, Jesus, the prince of peace, God. He's all right. I know he's all right. If you ask me, how do I know? I can let you know I was singing deep in sin, far from the people's shore, where it's changed within. See the garage, no more, but the master. He lifted me. I come to tell you, I know he's all right. Thank you, Lord. I feel all right. And I heard love, love, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I want you to know he's all right. I want you to know, thank you, Lord. He is the water, my spiritual water. When I'm thirsty, I come to tell you, and I know that he's all right. I want you to know he's my bread. When I'm hungry, I want you to know, I know he's all right. Yes, sir. I'm living better now. Down in my heart, he is my rock. He is my shield. And I know he's all right. And I know. And I know.
said, Jesus, you tell them.